first one took a while because it's development of the parts and figuring out how to do it and making notes and so on. Uh, this car here was the last one I built. Uh, it took me about um, two weeks, not even that, from beginning to end, not counting the roof. Now, the roof was another couple of weeks because I had to figure out how to make it and what to do with it the first time I ever made a roof. And then the ends, on either end, although they look like castings, they're actually wood that I fabricated up, sanded it, and so on, and then I fiberglassed over all of this fiberglass. Now, these little things here, they look like drawer knobs, but they're not. Uh, I had tried to use a drawer knob, but it looked like a drawer knob. So um, I looked on my O-Gage model. If you recall, I had an O-Gage model. And um, um, I copied the roof ventilators from that. So you want to take it off, you just pick it up. And then this, of course, you know, underneath there. Got a couple of fender washers in there. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see it. A couple of fender washers. And uh, as your roof. Now that center section is going to be for the coal. Back on. Like I mentioned, I didn't put any um, hinges on it because uh, you hinge it, which side do you hinge it on, this and that. So you, most of the time we be getting in here, just pick it up, put it like that, shovel out your coal, keep a shovel in here. I figure this will hold about 100 pounds of coal. We're going to find out. And it just sits on there. This is for my tools, this compartment here. And this compartment here is housing the air compressor that uh, I had uh, prior to this was in a flat car um, Mountain Car Company flat car that I purchased real quickly to have some cars. And um, I put mount the, the air compressor on that and then built a uh, crate looking box over top with a hinge on it. And I used that to sit on and that being my air temporarily until I got some other equipment built. But this is uh, what's called the RPO uh, Express. Reefer, or I'm not, it's actually reefer, express um, baggage, uh, or it just says Railway Express Agency here, and then on this side right down here it says uh, United States Post, United States Mail Railway Post Office, RPO. And now the striping on here, on the, on the original cars, they didn't have that striping, but it might have had it on a few, I've seen pictures of them. I think uh, it looked a little better, a little more uniform with the other cars that I have. I have two, two cars, um, the coach is finished. I'm going to build a third coach. And then I have the observation car, which I brought back now yesterday from the railroad club to uh, uh, get the green paint off of it and rebuild that car and put the air brakes on the trucks and rebuild the trucks. It's 35 years that nothing ever been done to it other than painting. One time it was used to be blue and gray, and then I changed it to green, and that's all. Uh, I plan on taking out the seats out of it, uh, three seats is more than enough. One seat's got to be for a conductor. Well, like I was saying, before this annoying fly start flying around here, I'm telling you, everybody wants to screw up my videos. Everybody. Anyhow, in this compartment is the air compressor. I'm going to show you that, or at least I'm going to run it for you. And uh, here we go. I got a little switch. I mounted a switch on the end. And I have a plug, electrical plug, here to um, plug it in when I'm in the engine house. Uh, this car will be stored behind the locomotive in the engine house, and then I plug it into the power supply there to charge the battery. There's a charger built into it, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But anyway, that's it running now. I'll put the top on it so you can see. At least here. Now, it's not too bad. You're going to hear it. There's no way you're going to get around that. I've let some of the air out so it's below 80 pounds right now. There's a piezo buzzer that I have installed on here that's hooked directly to the battery. It doesn't go through the fuse. And there's a reason for that I'll explain in a minute. The piezo buzzer, just like in a truck where they have the light or the buzzer to let you know that the air is not up to, to uh, enough um, pressure yet. So I'm going to turn this on now, and it will buzz until 
110 pounds. And it'll keep buzzing like that. Now, um, the idea behind it is that, okay, so now you know that there's less than the required amount that you want in the main reservoir. And just like on the prototype locomotives, I don't know if they had a buzzer, but they had some indication there to let you know that it was below on uh, freight 70 pounds on a passenger 90 pounds. And the reason is the more speed on the, on the um, passenger car trains, they needed to dump, if they went into emergency, it had more power to go into the cylinder to put the brakes on harder. But anyway, uh, I've more or less simulated that here. And what, what happens is that the buzzer keeps buzzing until 110 pounds, and then it continues to build up pressure to 160. And then, of course, it shuts off. Now, as the pressures, uh, the, the, the air is used and the pressure drops, at 120, it kicks on again and it builds up to 160. It cycles back and forth between 120 and 160. Now, if the power should get low enough in the battery and it won't run the compressor, basically what happens is it blows the fuse, which doesn't happen that often. But if it does, it'll keep using the air, continue to use the air, continue to use the air until it gets to 85 pounds, which is 15 pounds above the um, required amount of work the brakes in my case 70 pounds so there's enough juice in that battery to be able to blow that piezo buzzer when you hear that buzzer you've known that something has gone wrong with the system and to get back to the, to the steaming base or whatever and shut down or stop until you figure out what's wrong but it's a, it's a warning and you still have front air so you just shut off 110 pounds so now um, it'll continue to build to 160 so, uh, I'm, this, the, the air compressor I have in here right now is called a Vi Air, V-I-A-I-R, Vi Air. It, um, it's a 100% duty cycle. Uh, I want to put a better battery in there. I think I'm going to go to what's called an optimum battery. It's a make of a battery. You may see them. They have the, you can see the round cylinders in it, and there's a, they're expensive. They're about $200 between $150 and $200, but I'm hoping that's going to give me better life in the battery because the battery don't last too long. This is a, what I got from the auto zone or someplace. It's a deep discharge, but still. Um, then uh, I'm going to go to a better air compressor, which is called the Air Zenith. It's a little bit heavier air compressor. Instead of a 3 8 line, it has a half inch line, a little more volume of air. And it's got a fan built in right on top of the head that blows down and cools it. Now, one thing I'm worried about with this one is that the fact that it has, it's in an enclosed closure now, that I get very little air be able to come through. I might have to put some ventilators on it right in this area here. Showing now the, I'm going to show you the um, compressor unit here. This is a stainless steel tank. It's a five gallon tank. Or maybe it's probably two and a half gallons because I figure a gallon tank can is about that big, another one and a half. So it's two and a half gallons. Plenty of, plenty of air. Uh, it comes from a truck. I like the stainless steel because it doesn't corrode. And believe it or not, there's no way to um, drain the air out of here, drain the moisture out of here. So I rigged up, I drilled a hole in it and in the bottom and uh, put a uh, plug there and I have a drain uh, valve that I can blow the, air, blow the water out. Now, on a truck, and I got this, believe it or not, from an Army uh, training film, that they usually have two, two tanks. The first initial tank where the air comes in from the compressor, and then the secondary tank. And what that does is it, the first tank collects the moisture. So that's one, one thing to be said about having two tanks. But I don't have the room for two tanks, and I just blow the moisture out of it. I also have a moisture valve here for the... This is a moisture trap. You can see the compressor here. Now the new Vi, uh, this is the Vi air compressor. The new high, was it air zenith compressor is a little bit bigger. It's going to have a fan built into it, blowing down on the head to keep it cool. This is nothing more than a pressure switch. It's a pressure switch and a relay built into it. This uh, spaghetti mess here is just temporarily with the with the wire nuts and so on. I'll come up with a better plan on that.
of course the battery and over here what you can't see right in here is the charger just laying there and then I ran a, a conduit pipe down along here to the switch on the end here there's a switch on the end and a plug that you plug in and um, the piezo buzzer is down in here just a little buzzer and that's it you just plug into it and the fuse right here is the fuse line but like I said the piezo buzzer which is this line right here is always hot now it might be a, a black wire but I didn't have any red so um, it's just a small wire that runs down back to the switch so when you turn the switch on the piezo buzzer will be energized and it always stays energized um, there's always enough juice in this battery even 11 volts will run the piezo buzzer slow but it will work it and um, I got a 3 8 line here this is the main line that goes down to a valve that's out here that from that line through a glad hand goes into the into the back of the tender up until the valves that are in the tender to operate the brakes and then of course back through the train line and it has so on this car it has two two glad hands on the end one for the uh, for the train and one for the main air supply um, if I build a express reefer I'm gonna have to put connections on either end so that if I use this car in conjunction with the express reefer I could have air supply from both all the way through which you you know obviously longer trains you need more air that's what they did on the prototype they had uh, two air compressors for that purpose for long freights and so on and uh, just as a backup of course but anyway um, that's the guts here and of course you know you put the roof on it's over here put the roof right on it and you're good to go okay the one other thing I want to mention is that the glass on the windows here we talked about this I did a video on it back ways I forget what number it is but I use the six six thousand e glue that they recommend and it holds them in place except that I accidentally banged into one of these glass doing something and it popped it right off so what I'm gonna have to do is make up a little dog just like door dogs on the front of a locomotive I'll make up four little dogs and make them out of a die cast metal drill and tap them and then find a find a um, rivet or, or, or a, a slotted head screw that has almost the same size as the rivets here and knock out the um, the rivets four rivets and then just put the dogs on here inside and of course I'll have to unfortunately um, repaint that but uh, I'll touch them up and then that's uh, that that'll take care of the problem and uh, stop them from knocking banging off so with that in mind that concludes the series on the cars and I uh, hope you enjoyed it um, I certainly had fun making them I uh, I, I like the end results sometimes I get a little frustrated but um, sometimes um, it happens and uh, I just move on and just put it down for a little while and come back to it and that's okay. But uh, remember it's a hobby and um, I enjoy it like I said. Uh, I've really had a lot of fun making this. always wanted to make a, metal, a, a wooden roof that it worked out pretty good. Uh, lettering of course we've done all that. Battery boxes, triple valves, the whole bit. So that's it for now on this. I hope you enjoyed the series, and uh, we'll see you. One last thing out of the track, I'll do a little bit on how they look all together, or maybe I'll do some pictures. But hopefully uh, that worked out. And by the way, I want to mention I got a, a wireless lavalier mic now because people have been asking about, oh, I can't hear you, it's echoey, this and that. And anyway, where's your video? But anyhow, uh, I bought the bullet and bought some uh, wireless mics and uh, get the new camera going learning how to work that so everything's looking out pretty good and uh, uh, we're going to continue to make videos uh, I want to make some professional videos and I'm going to start with wheels drive wheels I have some drive wheels to turn and I'm going to go through the entire process on how to turn a drive wheel and uh, 
uh, I think um, I've encouraged, been encouraged enough with these videos from all you people out there, and I think I'm going to make them to, to sell. So um, uh, I think there's a market for it, so we'll see. But anyway, that's it from now. Charles Nelson Corrigan Productions. Thanks again.